My Carolina Panthers magical offseason continues on as we have signed yet another big name free agent to come in and be a weapon in this already loaded offense. And in this video, I'm going to give you all my thoughts on the signing, the good, the bad, my optimism, as well as my concerns in regards to this player. And we're going to get into that right after this. From the foe, you did. Welcome to The Way I See It with Jamario Rashad. This is a Carolina Panthers fan channel. Please do me a favor by hitting the like button and please make sure you subscribe as I am on my road to 2K. Trying to get this channel jumping before the season starts. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get to our new wide receiver. Now, if you have not heard the news already, I am here to inform you that the Carolina Panthers have signed wide receiver DJ Chark formerly of the Detroit Lions, to a one-year deal to come in and fight to be wide receiver one or wide receiver two, depending on how he looks throughout camp. Now, if you are not aware of just who DJ Chark is, DJ Chark is a 6'4", 198-pound wide receiver, as I mentioned, from Alexandria, Louisiana. He was drafted in the second round, 61st overall in the 2018 draft from LSU. Now, to give you all a little more, uh, a peek behind the curtain as to uh, how how do his uh, his physical measurables uh, stack up at the NFL Combine? At six foot four, he was able to clock a 4.3440 yard dash as well as have a 40 inch vertical. So at the wide receiver position, he is an absolute physical freak and you can understand why he went so high in the draft. Although it wasn't in the first round, being a high day two is nothing to scoff at either, man. So now uh, with that being the case, now that you all uh, have a little better understanding as to who DJ Chark is, I want to talk about my optimism behind this signing and, and, and the good I feel uh, when I hear that we have DJ Chark on this deal. Now, uh, for starters, man, the Panthers, uh, Panthers fans should be very familiar with this name. If you do not remember, DJ Chark in his two games in his career against the Carolina Panthers has absolutely whooped our ass every single time. Now in 2019, when he still played for the Jacksonville Jaguars, he had eight receptions for 164 yards and two touchdowns. He was catching passes from Gardner Minshew and still busting up our secondary. Now fast forward to this most recent year, be it 2022, when he was catching passes from Jared Goff, he uh, had four receptions for 108 yards, still chopping up our secondary. So that lets you know or just jogs your memory if you had forgotten those games against um, the Lions and the Jaguars. But DJ Chark has always been a thorn in the side of the Carolina Panthers. Now to speak to how he performed in this most recent year in 2022 in just nine games, which is very important to note, in just nine games, DJ Chark had 30 catches for 502 yards three touchdowns, 24 first downs, and he averaged 16.7 yards per catch. So he was absolutely a big play ready to or waiting to happen at any point in time. Now, I absolutely uh, love seeing these numbers from a guy uh, in, in short spurts, just knowing that whenever he is on the field, he is able to be effective. But notice how I mentioned whenever he is on the field, and that's going to quickly take me into my concerns about this potential signing, be it that DJ Chark, although he is only 26 years old, I think it is very fair to say at this point in his career, he is injury prone. Like there's not really uh, much argument to go about it. Now in five seasons in the NFL, DJ Chark has only played in 54 of a possible 82 games. That means that he has missed a total of 24, uh, yeah, let me see, 28 games total over five years, which is more like over a season worth of missed time. Now, what exactly is plaguing him? What exactly is causing DJ Chark to continuously be out? Now, if you were to look at the graphic to the side of me right here, you will see that it is, it is a number of things or a number of injuries that DJ Chark has uh, suffered throughout his career. But what sidelines him the most and what concerns me the most would be those four ankle injuries that you see um, right here on the on the graphic, courtesy of um, 
courtesy of of DraftSharks.com. So in four in in four of the last five years, DJ Chark has either sprained or fractured the same ankle time after time, causing him to miss to miss time each and every year. As I mentioned this la- uh, in this last year, it caused him to miss six uh, to miss six games, but he was still able to bounce back. Um, although uh, he uh, although he suffers these injuries. His production whenever he is on the field leads me to believe that he's still able to play and these injury concerns haven't necessarily taken away from his overall ability. But at this point with four consecutive like meaningful injuries, it's fair to assume that he's at least probably lost a step from that 4.3440 yard dash that he had uh, four or five years ago. But that still does not necessarily mean that DJ Chark is a bad player, an ineffective player, an inefficient player. Anything like that, DJ Chark has just had his had his fair share of injuries so far up to this point in his career, man. So in conclusion, this one is not going to be a long one, but I am going to give you my final thoughts, man. Now, the first thing I want to say is seeing that this is just a one-year contract, I absolutely Love this move. Scott Fitterer does it yet again. As it was reported that DJ Chark has taken multiple visits with multiple teams, to have him interested in coming and playing in Carolina on a one-year prove-it deal when he does not necessarily, I'm assuming, we who knows what goes on behind the scenes, but I'm assuming that he doesn't even know who's going to be throwing him the ball, but he entrusts his uh, the next few years or his prove-it year to be here in Carolina. That is big, and Scott Fitterer and David Tepper being able to pull that off and getting him to agree to a one-year deal, I just absolutely, I just, it's, yes, I just, I love it. I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Now, to speak to how good he is, he is arguably, and pretty much, it's not really much of an argument, Outside of Adam Thielen, who is our new, who is our outside of this guy, our newest wide receiver addition, DJ Chark is pretty much undoubtedly the best wide receiver on the roster. I know there are going to be some people that make an argument for Terrace Marshall Jr. Trust me, I want to see Terrace Marshall Jr. break out and be wide receiver one as well. But if we are dealing with the sample size of information we've seen from their prior seasons, there's no argument for Terrace Marshall Jr. being better than um, DJ Chark. So anybody lower than Terrace Marshall on the depth chart, of course, they're not touching him either. So outside of Thielen, uh, Thielen as well as DJ Chark at the moment, uh, if uh, Terrace Marshall does not break out in camp, those guys will be our number one and number two. And that does mean that we have a better wide receiver core than we had taking the field uh, last year. And also with uh, Chark coming in, that means that whenever we are on, uh, whenever we have a three receiver set out there, that does not mean that we have to be overly dependent on putting Shai Smith out there to either play the slot or as I mentioned just that third receiver spot we could put we could put uh, DJ Chark there now and we could ex- uh, we could put Shai Smith exclusively at the kick returner positions or punt returner positions hopefully he's gotten better at either or but having a third receiver a proven third receiver means that we do not have to depend on Shai Smith as much I know there are some Shai Smith troopers but come on guys just just let it go but uh at the uh at this point man i finally want to say that my favorite part about this signing is now that we have went out and we have signed two wide receivers that sets us that sets us up to be able to go out and draft for the best player available in the rounds following uh the first of course we're going to go after a qb with that first overall pick but if we uh, now that we have signed two wide receivers we do not have to two wide receivers as well as a tight end we do not have to be as thirsty to go out and grab offensive talent in the earlier rounds if there is a edge position player that is the best player available we can grab that guy if it is a linebacker there we can grab that guy because majority of our offseason efforts have been focused on the offensive side of the ball that means that we with our draft capital are able to draft to uh, invest that in whomever the best player is available at that time despite whatever our needs may be because we've already addressed them for the most part 
prior to the draft. Now, should we still draft a wide receiver? Should we still draft a tight end? Sure, I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying we are in a position where if we elect not to do that, it won't be the worst thing in the world as it would have been before we made these offseason moves. And that is what makes me love this move so, so much more, man. So with that being said, what do you all think about this DJ Chark addition? I think he is going to, this is going to be a great move for the team, especially on a one-year prove it. Hopefully he can stay healthy. I know he is going to be hungry. He is trying to earn a big time contract moving forward. He was a second round pick. I know he knows that I know he thinks that he deserves it. He's an LSU guy. So I expect for him to have a big year despite who uh, whoever we choose to be a quarterback. But you all leave your comments down below. What do you all think about the addition of DJ Chark to the Carolina Panthers? I will be sure to get back to you there. But until next time, remember, I am Jamario Rashad. This is the way I see it. Like and subscribe. And I'm out. Peace.